also like to thank, I see a lot of Missouri s t shirts out there. I'm seeing there's some uh, folks from uh, MU here as well, so thanks for driving in. We appreciate the support. And I'd like to talk about two subjects tonight, which I'm very passionate about both, electricity and nuclear energy. Electricity is that instantaneous commodity that we have to generate to supply your needs. We have to match to the, our demand exactly to what you use at any given time during the day. We don't store it, we make it as you use it. If you don't make it as you use it, bad things happen. Uh, the uh, electrical grid can become unstable, uh, things shut down, you have a blackout, which we've seen in our country in the past. Nuclear energy is unique as well. It's one of the most dense power sources known to man. Pound for pound, enriched uranium has thousands of times the power density of coal. I don't know how many folks have picked up those brochures out there, but it shows a little pellet, one small pellet equal to 2,000 pounds of coal, or 17,000 cubic feet of natural gas. So let's talk a little about what nuclear energy is in the U.S. I think it falls into two categories. It falls into the commercial power reactor category. There's 104 power reactors in the world, or in the U.S. Our U.S. fleet is the largest in the country, or in the world. You employ approximately 120,000 people in that industry. And that's just not at the plants, but that's in the fuel fabrication facilities, in the construction facility uh, companies that support us. Uh, as well as engineering firms that also support us. We supply 20% of the electrical power needs in the country. One light in five is lit by nuclear power. Also in the category of nuclear energy is naval reactors used for maritime propulsion. The U.S. Navy has approximately 103 uh, naval reactors powering 83 ships. And this isn't new technology. The first nuclear power station went online back in 1957. 54 years ago. These pictures here, this is the Palo Verde nuclear power station. It's the largest in the U.S. It's three 1,300 megawatt reactors out in the uh, desert surrounding Phoenix, Arizona. They actually use the, uh, the wastewater from Phoenix to cool that plant. So why build any new power plants? The data you see here is from our 2011 Integrated Resource Plan, and that's a plan that Ameren produces every three years it's a, uh, to uh, inform the state of our plans uh, for the next 15 to 20 years. It's, uh, it, it forecasts credible, low-cost options for Ameren customers. It evaluates thousands of different scenarios. It looks at energy efficiency, new generation, uh, potential changes in the economic status of the state to try to predict what power needs will have. As I mentioned, it's done every three years. It's a, it's a public stakeholder process. People can register as stakeholders and be involved in that process and provide input to that final report. The graph here shows a, a gap. This is from our 2011 report. It shows a gap in future generation. And basically, you see the red line is increasing load here. The blue line is our existing generation. You notice the existing generation is going down. The, the, we forecast retirements of some of our older fossil plants, and we see a continued growth in, uh, in, in demand. So this, this, this graphic shows uh, Edmonds production facilities. As you can see, uh, there's about 10,000 megawatts of generation in the Edmonds, Missouri fleet. Just looking at some of the dates on these plants. This is our Keokuk station that supplies Missouri. This is actually uh, up towards Iowa. Built in 1913. Our Osage plant down at Lake of the Ozarks, constructed in 1931. These are base load hydro plants we use to supply power. Then we have our fossil fleet, Merrimack station, built in 1953. Sioux, Labadee, and Rush Island, built in the late 60s, early 70s. All those plants were baseload plants. They're basically parked at 100% power, used to provide that power that we just basically need 24-7, 365. Down below is our Callaway plant. It's our newest plant in the fleet. We're online in 1984. It's also a baseload plant. We have our peaking plants, our combustion uh, turbine generators, and our Tom's Law pump storage facility. 
you notice, all these plants, the coal plant fleet average is over 40 years. And from a capacity perspective, uh, we're heavily relied on coal. Let's talk a little bit more about our Merrimack station. Uh, again, online in 1953, it was largely designed with 1940s technology. If it was a car, it would look like that. That is uh, Chevy's hot uh, Bel Air from 19, a two-door Bel Air. Uh, you know, that car is what we drive 24-7, 365, to keep the lights on. And we've been driving it for 58 years. Yes, we do maintenance on it, and we do upgrades, but the basic machine was designed in the 40s and put into service in the 50s. So keep that picture in mind as we talk about uh, energy efficiency and how efficient this car might be compared to a new one. The previous slide showed where Amherst, Missouri is. Let's look at the rest of the state. What this graphic shows, we have about 20,000 megawatts of generation in the state of Missouri, and they're predominantly coal, and many of those plants are nearing retirement. The chart shows that the average age of these plants is about 40 years old, and potentially 70% of them will be retired in the next 20 years. So hope that the uh, national average is any different. It's really not. This slide shows that, uh, looking at, looks at the load growth uh, going forward. This is from the Energy Information Administration. It's a non, it's a government, uh, independent government agency that collects and analyzes data. They predict that we'll have an average load growth in the U.S. between three quarters and one percent, which doesn't sound like much, but out till 2035, that's 1,163 billion kilowatt hours. I was just curious, what's it take to produce 1,163 billion kilowatt hours? What do I have to have built by 2035 to produce that power? And there it is. You know, the numbers are pretty staggering. 131 new nuclear plants, you know, 277 natural gas plants, and 600 megawatts. If you try to do it with just renewables, it's a lot. 63,000, uh, you know, 10 megawatt solar PV plants with over 300,000 wind turbines. It's a lot of hardware. The point in here is, is that there's no, there's not going to be one s single silver bullet here. We're going to need all elements of this generation to meet that capacity. And also note that those numbers don't take into account the retirement of coal plants. That's just the need to to meet the, the low growth. So I have, you know, hundreds of gigawatts of coal plants going to be also taken offline uh, and need to be replaced as well. So this need for a diverse energy portfolio was also echoed by President Obama in his State of the Union speech, where he stated that uh, he has a new goal by 2035, 80% of America's electricity will come from clean energy sources. I think he hit it right on the head, talking that some want wind, some want solar, others want nuclear, clean coal, or natural gas. But to meet this goal, we'll need them all. So I think we can all agree that there's probably a clear need to plan, plan for additional generation. A major segment of that required replacement load is a replacement generation will be base load generation, as I spoke earlier. Those plants are run 24-7, 365. And the base load arena in today's environment, there's really only two choices you can do. It's natural gas or it's nuclear. So let's look at nuclear and some of the pros and cons of it. From a safety perspective. Nuclear energy clearly has the best safety record of all base load technologies using common industrial benchmarks, injuries, fatalities, and et cetera. Clearly, the numbers support nuclear. There has been three major incidents from the global fleet of uh, 440 operating nuclear reactors over the, uh, the past 50 years. The first one, Three Mile Island, 1979, an event that changed our industry, but from a safety perspective, there were no fatalities at that plant. There, were no, there was no loss of property and no discernible long-term health effects. There's 12 studies done to show there was no long-term health effects. Chernobyl in 1986, that was a reactor that had major design deficiencies, a violation of operating procedures, and an absence of a safety culture. That reactor is not licensable in the U.S. or any other Western country. There's 56 people killed at that directly killed from that accident. And then the more recent Fukushima. Uh, granted, it's a tragic accident and it's ongoing. But there were no fatalities at that plant. There was 
was not one single fatality, radiation-related fatality, from that accident. And the Japanese authorities report no widespread radiological exposures occurred that would lead to long-term health issues. U.S. plants are designed, sited, and regulated differently than Chernobyl and Fukushima. And the next generation of plants will have even increased levels of safety using passive safety systems. Let's talk about envir the environmental aspect of nuclear power, and I think it's one of our advantages. It has the least environmental impact of any base load technology available today. Nuclear plants capture all emissions produced in the power generation process and only release what's allowed by federal regulations. Nuclear plants have minimal greenhouse gas emissions. We make up about 69% of America's emissions-free generation, with wind and solar, geothermal being about 10%, and hydro being 21%. One minute. The used fuel has a small footprint compared to other base load technologies. You heard Ed talk about nuclear power being expensive, and I think this slide will put it in perspective. We have a large uh, nuclear plant in our portfolio, and this is our rates. Having Calibre Unit 1 service has kept uh, Amherst, Missouri's rates about 30% below the national average. We have the lowest rates of any investor-owned utility in the state, and Amherst Integrated Resource Plan shows that nuclear is one of the low-cost base load options uh, concerning all the life cycle costs. So, nuclear energy, are the risks worth, worth the rewards? Yes. Nuclear is safe. It's designed with multiple layers of defense and regulated effectively by the NRC. It's clean, a virtually emission-free power source that provides over 69% of the U.S.'s carbon-free electricity. It's reliable. Our fleet has a sustained capacity factor, uh, which is a measure of efficiency of operation, between 89 and 92% since 2004. It's affordable. It is the lowest cost production of any base load technology out there. Thank you.